Okay, so we're going to work on translations a little bit uh, here on this video. So a uh, couple of things we got to look for. A translation, the underlying theme or key concept for translations uh, <clears throat> will be that every point on the pre-image uh, will move by the same directed segment as every other point. on the pre-image. So that is different than the other transformations, okay? We covered uh, line reflection. Uh, the points could move in a different way uh, when you have a line reflection. For instance, okay, if we reflect this figure over this line, you're going to notice that, say, A is right here. A prime is approximately right there. Okay, where you have maybe B uh, is going to move a different amount. Okay, B prime might be somewhere in this vicinity. So you could see B traveled much further to get to B prime than A to A prime. Okay, so in a line reflection, you might move a different amount um, to go from the pre image to the image. Okay, but with translations, with translations, every point is going to move by the same amount, in the same direction even, uh, everything. So that's what's going to make translations different. And that's why we talked about directed segments uh, in the previous chapter, so that we knew what we were talking about there. All right, so let's take a look. So what's different about a, a translation is something like this will happen, okay? You'll move every point uh, up and over the same amount. So if this is point A, this is A prime, there's your directed segment from there to there, right? Okay, we're moving in that direction. Now, say that's 10, and we're moving in that, you know, kind of a north-east uh, direction, so to speak. Uh, if, if we do this, okay, um, B to B prime is going to move the same amount in the same northeast direction, so to speak. It'll be the same amount. So that's unique to translations, where you know that every point is going to move the same distance, uh, same amount, same direction, everything. Okay. Uh, some notation we have to be ready for, uh, possibly capital T, and then there's a couple ways this can be written. Uh, something like this with parentheses, negative two five. Really don't like this, uh, but we kind of accept it. Uh, this will mean translate. Okay. Uh, right, I'm sorry, left two, down, uh, up five. Rough. So the first number is the x direction. A negative will move us left. The second uh, number is the y direction. That will move us up or down. In this case, it's positive, so it's going to move us up. Now, uh, I don't like this because it couldn't be confused with uh, some other things um, where this is... I mean, this is a point notation when technically it's a vector or directed segment. Uh, what you may see is uh, this symbol here. That's really more for vector notation. Okay? So that one is a better display. Um, that still means uh, translate. Same thing. Translate uh, left two and up five. Okay, just a, sim uh, just a small difference in notation. This is probably the better one, um, and I don't know what you're going to see uh, from Common Core. Another way is this is writing the rule, and this one's easy to work with with translations. Uh, you're going to have, and if we use the same one, it's going to be x minus 2, y plus 5. Okay, so this is the algebraic rule, algebraic notation or rule. You know, the rule is kind of saying, okay, what's going to happen to x? Well, we're going to take 2 away from x. What's going to happen to y? We're going to add 5 to y. Um, so that's going to mean the same thing. That's going to mean translate 
uh, left two, you know, because subtracting two is going to move it left two from the x, and then up five. Because when you add five to the y, it's going to push the points up. All right, so pretty reasonable. Um, you know, this shouldn't be too terrible, this one here. Um, so we'll just do a couple examples here. Okay, so we'll translate uh, left three up six to point A. All right, now I'll give you the coordinates for A. A is going to be five, uh, negative three. All right, so we can go ahead and algebraically do it, or let's graph it this time. So five, negative three. There's A. We're going to move it left 3 because we're subtracting uh, 3 from the x value, up 6. Okay, so that's a prime. Looks like that is uh, the direction that it moved. Okay, now a to a prime is a directed segment, um, and then the direction is left 3, up 6. Okay. So that's how we're going to do that. And every point in the problem would move the same amount. Okay, that's going to go to, and you can do it algebraically too. We'll bet that A prime is going to be at 2, um, 3. And you can see that. All I did was I subtracted 3 from the 5, and I added 6 to the negative 3. Okay, so another example. Let's go with this rule. Oops. Okay, so what this is going to make us do is algebraically we're going to go right 7 because we're adding 7 to the x value. And then we're going to take everything and we're going to go down 1. Um, so we could use the same graph. Let's throw b over in the third quadrant. Yeah, that's something we got to work on too. Uh, what if we go negative, uh, let's go negative 5, uh, negative 2. All right, negative 5, negative 2. is b. Uh, if we apply this one, that's going to take us right 7 down 1 from there. Right 7 down 1. There's b prime. Okay, So that's obviously a different translation to move from b to b prime. Uh, b prime looks like it's at 2, negative 3. And you can see that's what would have happened. If we add five, uh, add 7 to negative 5, you get 2. If you subtract 1 from negative 2, you get negative 3. Uh, so you can do these algebraically pretty easily. You can just count. Um, translations should be very reasonable. So to go to another example here, let's make up uh, example number 3 here for this. All right. One of the things we'll probably have to do is find the translation. Okay, so what translation um, carries C at um, 6, negative 1, you know, to C prime, and what we'll say is 8, 6. Okay, so what we could do is either write the rule or put in the uh, symbolic notation. Uh, one way to do it is to graph. You gotta be careful. This is C C prime. Okay. So it moved in this direction. So that's a right two up seven. Okay. So how would we write that? You could say translate the x directions first. It went right two, so positive two. And went up seven, so positive seven. Okay, or we could write the rule x, y maps to x plus 2, y plus 7. Okay, and you can check that algebraically. It's going to work out. Okay. Another example, what we might face. Um, uh, map e prime. Um, the image of e 
let's go with uh, 7, negative 3. After the same translation that mapped, uh, we'll say D. to d prime. Okay, so a little more involved. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to follow what they're saying here. All right, brand new problem. Uh, so maybe we'll, um, let's get rid of this one then. Get rid of this. Use the same graph here. Okay, so this is what's going to be strange here. We've got to take D right to D prime so that moved it looks like left two up three. I think it went left two up three all right so what we would want to do with 7, 3, oh, sorry, 7, negative 3, is we would want to make that same move, left 2, up 3, to hit E prime. And then that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So E prime would be at 5, 0. Okay, so you could do that math uh, with the graph where we could have done it algebraically, okay? So d to d prime was using the rule. Looks like we subtracted 2 from x and added 3 to y. So if we take e, 7, negative 3, and apply the same rule, okay, subtract 2 from x, you get 5. If you add 3 to y, you'll get 0. Whoops, squeeze that in there. So there's a couple ways to do it, graphing or algebraic, and uh, be ready for any of those types of variations. Okay? Thanks so much.